do a quick recap of mitosis and meiosis. So if we have a look on the screen, we've got a chromosome. So you can see that there are actually 46 chromosomes in body cells and we've got 23 that come from your mum and 23 that come from your dad and you can see from this one that the chromosome is made of DNA so it's got all DNA wound up into this X shape so we've got 46 in body cells and 23 in gametes which are sex cells like sperm and egg cells so we're going to have a look at mitosis first so if we have a look at the cell cycle of mitosis you can see that of all of the cell cycle, there's only a small, tiny portion where mitosis is actually happening. So that's actual cell division, and the rest of the cycle is preparing for cell division. So during this time, you've got interphase, which is where um, the DNA and the organelles are replicated. And when this happens, you'll find that the mass of the cell doubles so only a small portion is dedicated to actual division of the cell cycle. So we'll go past what homologous chromosomes are for now. So if you have a look at these pictures, these are actual um, pictures from a light microscope of a root tip squash. So you can see the chromosomes are visible. So to start off with, um, you've got this cell, and that's the nucleus, and that's the outside of the cell and um, you can't really see the chromosomes at all. Now, at interphase, um, which is what ha is happening here, you have the DNA content of the cell, the genetic material replicates, and then all the organelles like ribosomes, mitochondria, um, um, cytoplasm, all that sort of stuff um, doubles. And then here you have um, prophase and at prophase the chromosomes become visible so you can actually see them in the cell so at prophase they become visible and then what happens is they line up on the equator of the cell so on the middle so then you get metaphase you don't need to know the individual stages um, but they line up on the middle and then what happens is they start to pull apart, as you can see happening to start off with here, so we call that early anaphase. But then when they actually migrate or move to the opposite poles of the cell, we call that anaphase. And then you get telophase, which is where new membranes form and two nuclear membranes form, and you get two identical copies. So you can see that first of all, the chromosomes are in the middle of the cell, then the chromosomes line up on the equator, and then they move to opposite poles, and then you have two exact copies. So you need to remember two cells, and they are identical copies. And they're really important that they're identical copies, because that's what you use to grow, and also to repair. So if you've got a damaged cell, you're going to need to replace it with an identical copy. So if we have a look now at meiosis. So before we move on to meiosis, we need to have a look at what gametes actually are. So it says, what do you know about gametes? You can pause the video now and then you can write down what you think you know about gametes and then I'm going to go over it. So this one here is an egg cell and these are sperm cells. You probably knew that already. So the egg cell has got a thick jelly coat and that thick jelly coat is for protection and they're usually about 0.1 millimeters in size so the size of a full stop so you, they're much larger than sperm and you get one released every 28 days from the ovaries but they do contain 23 chromosomes in the nucleus and then in contrast sperm are much tinier so in the same space as the egg cell, you can fit 170 sperm end to end. So they're much smaller and they're produced in larger amounts. But within their nucleus, they have 23 chromosomes. So if we have a look at the implications of that, so you have 
the egg cell that's got 23 chromosomes and during fertilization it combines with a sperm with 23 chromosomes. So will just clarify exactly what happens. The sperm swims to the egg. Um, enzymes in the sperm um, break down the jelly coat of the egg and it inserts its nucleus inside and then you get nuclear fusion. And the nuclear fusion means that both the 23 chromosomes, so 23 plus 23 equals 46. So you get 46 chromosomes um, and that forms a fertilized egg which we call a zygote. So zygote. And then from that one cell, dividing repeatedly by mitosis, which we've just explained, because it's growth, then you get an embryo. Every single cell in the embryo has 46 chromosomes. Now the 46 chromosomes associate in 23 pairs, 23 maternal pairs, sorry, 23 maternal chromosomes that you got from your mummy and 23 paternal chromosomes that you got from your daddy. So they associate together. So 23 and 23, 46. So this is a schematic diagram of mitosis. So you can see that you've got the single cell to start off with. At interphase, the DNA content of the cell and the organelles doubles. And this is where it increases in mass. So if it doubles, then you get 92. Then through the process that I just described, the, um, the DNA content, half of it moves into one cell, half of it moves into the other. And you get two cells that are identical copies. We call identical copies clones. Now, if you have a look at meiosis, meiosis is slightly different. So the first part of it is very similar to mitosis. So you get 46 chromosomes in a body cell. Or let's say this was um, the production of sperm in the testes. You'd have 46 chromosomes in the cells in the testes. And they would double to 92 at interphase and then split to make two identical copies. Now at this point, there's a further division. So that further division sees half of these chromosomes go into this cell and half of these chromosomes go into this cell and the same at the other side. So you only get 23 chromosomes and then if this was in the testes, they would be sperm cells. So if you, ha if you said that 46 was N, the number of chromosomes, you would have 2N at this point. Sorry, we're not going to call it like that, sorry. So if we called this this one 2n then when it doubled this would be 4n and then it would reduce so 2n that way and 2n that way and then these would all just have n in them so meiosis is the process involved in the production of gametes and this happens in the testes and it happens in the ovaries in the testes to make sperm and in the ovaries to make eggs so if you look at all three of these schematic diagrams, you should be able to explain them. So if you pause the video and then describe as much as you can about each one, and then I'll go through them. You can also watch the Amoeba Sisters clip on mitosis and the Amoeba Sisters clip on meiosis to help explain. Right, so if we have a look at them, A represents mitosis. The, four, the, the two N here represents the 46 chromosomes and then they double at interphase to produce 4 N. So that's what number you should have there and that's 92. And then when they divide again, they make two identical copies, two clones that have 46 chromosomes each. B is actually representing fertilization. Now the N number of chromosomes is 23 in the egg and 23 in the sperm. And then when they come together, they restore the chromosome number again to 46, and then that divides by mitosis to form an embryo. And then the third diagram represents meiosis. So you've got 2N, which is 46, then at interphase, the DNA content doubles, and you get 4N, which is 92. Then they divide, like in mitosis, to form two cells with 46 chromosomes. But what happens then is they divide again and then you end up getting four cells, each with 23 chromosomes. And they're the gametes, that's how the sperm and egg cells are formed.